sausage. Stu, up until a couple of years ago, if you wanted to go racing at TT, you could just buy a 50 quid helmet and go racing. Yeah, if it had an ACU sticker on the back, you're good to go. Buy, so, an, yeah. AC, buy an ACU sticker off, off eBay. Yeah, buy an ACU sticker off eBay or buy a 50 quid plastic helmet and you're good to go. Sure. You're obeying the rules, yeah. Prob probably not the best idea. No. But they brought in this new FIM rule. Yeah, so basically the MotoGP organisers realised, well, essentially the same thing. There was no standard apart from 2205 to say whether your helmet was safe or not. Right. So they wanted to raise the bar with helmet safety and bought in a new homologation for MotoGP, which is now rolled out to helmets you can buy. Right. So, so to go and rest at the TT this year, they've got to, be, they've got to have this FIM spec homologation. Yep. So what's the difference between the, 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 the top-of-the-range helmet a couple of years ago to a top of the rec to, to the an FIM spec helmet like basically you could sort of say they're probably underneath the same but the tests they have to go through to verify that are a lot more stringent so right. it means the basic helmets we're talking about just aren't going to cut the mustard so the impact speeds are higher it's got helmet penetration test uh, and it's got a rotational test as well <laughs> <laughs> you got me pretty much on penetration thank you very much how can you tell whether one isn't is, I well, that, the easiest thing, one, so it's got it's it on the FIM sticker, but the important thing, on the chin strap, you can have a, like a holographic label with a QR code on. Oh, yeah. So for a, a scrutineer, all they need to do is get their smartphone out, open the camera, it'll well, scan the QR code. Cool. Really? Cool. Do, they all, do they all have that? They're not yep. all these FIM ones. So if you scan it, open the page, and that's going to tell you what size. So the helmet's homologated no by size. So not just the individual model. So every size is individually tested. Right. So it's not like they tested a medium, but the extra large is not going to be anywhere near as good. Blimey. And that tells you everything about the helmet, what extensions it's got, what, um, what it's valid for in use, what the hologram looks like, the sticker, everything. So Jesus. instead of having to look for a sticker on the back, that's fixed, permanently fixed on the helmet. So if you've got that... QR yeah, yeah. code on there on the chin strap. Yeah. And I'm guessing you, you, you can't. I'm guessing you can't pick them up for five quid off eBay. No, <laughs> no, they're not copyable. So uh, are, are the are the FIM spec helmets a lot more expensive then? Yeah, there it's really only the top of the range helmets. Okay. From if you look on the list, is all the main, major manufacturers have got an FIM spec right. helmet. So it's not like there's only an R or an HV. Okay. All the main manufacturers do FIM spec helmets. You'll see the guys in MotoGP Get using. It. So so is it? So I guess if they've gone through more tests you could argue that they're maybe better yeah well, you, well, well, you be, know they're better that's the thing yeah, you know yeah. they're better than one that hasn't got it which you know nothing about apart from the fact it's got 2205 sure. standards so now you've got 2206 coming in but that covers all helmets flip fronts full face right. whereas the FIM standard is specifically built around racing racing so it's so, only going to be racing helmets okay. you'll see with FIM so standard. there wouldn't necessarily be any point in you know a, a, a a fellow who rides on the street, or, or, or even if he goes racing, not necessarily doing any international level stuff, the, uh, uh, it doesn't necessarily need, just because it's got, F, you know, it's top of the range because it's passed all the FIM tests, it, it'd probably still be all right in a, in, in a, a top spec helmet that yeah it's like from Arrow, you've got the RX-7, the regular RX-7 and the RX-7 racing, yeah, essentially yeah. They're the same helmet. They've just been through a different homologation. But okay. you could say that the FIM one, you know, has passed all those extra tests. Okay. So it's yeah, been yeah. tested at much higher speeds. It's had a rotational test done. It's had the penetration test done. So you've got the confidence that that is the best of the best. Right. It's just whether that's what suits your riding style. Because, you know, you're not going to see stuff like drop down sun visors in sure, racing yeah, helmets. Sure, yeah. So. Not? I'm not even going to answer that. <laughs> just you're going around the Craig. Oh, the sun's come down. Let me just, <laughs> just flip Genius. this sun visor down. But yeah, these, for, in essence, they are racing helmets. And you know what you want. Well, you know what you want at the TT from a racing helmet is not necessarily what you want from a helmet to ride down to the yeah. south of France. Yeah. So you know that it just raises the standard again. TT is, you know, it's the most challenging race in the world. Way more than MotoGP. Yeah. And if you want the best of the best helmets anywhere, it's going to be at the Isle of Man. You know, yeah. not only just if you crash, the obvious, but all the other stuff like the visor system, using tear-offs, you know, the thing's going to get pebble dashed with stones and you don't want vents flying off and the mm. thing malfunctioning on yeah, you. So, yeah. you know, I, th I think it's what the TT guys have done is great because it's aligning the TT with the standards that are about in MotoGP. In the international level. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's just, an international level race. Yeah, and it's guaranteeing you guys as competitors are wearing 
the top level kit at a top level race. So, nice. yeah, no brainer for me. Great. And is it? It was. It's fair to say there was um, when Dovi, there was a bit of an issue, wasn't it? For, for instance, there were some manufacturers when the FIM announced this change, some engine manufacturers weren't ready to launch these helmets. Yeah, and, but, so but, Dovi had to wear a shoey when he was signed for. Suomi. Yeah, uh, which was yeah. not, I wouldn't say it's probably any of the manufacturer's fault. No, when they it came does. out, the testing houses were full because they're testing one of every size. So you can imagine, like, there's five sample helmets get tested for each size. So there's a high speed, uh, a medium speed, the oblique, which is a rotational one, and then a spike test as well. So you put 20 or 30 helmet manufacturers around the world all trying to get their racing helmets yeah, yeah. tested at the same yeah. time. And they made the rule, like, if you haven't got the homologation, you can't ride. There was no dispensation yeah so that's why stuff like that happens but yeah now if you look down anyone can go online and there's all the helmets that meet the standard are all published online so you know what what you need to go and buy but from all the major manufacturers everyone's got a FIM helmet so like we've got the P Stern RX7 racing both of which meet the standard so so if you're racing at the TT or any international level stuff you need a FIM Spec. Yeah, you have to have one at the TT. You have to have one in any world event, World Superbikes, MotoGP. But to be honest, if you're doing track days and any racing, I would want to be wearing, putting the best thing on my head. And that FIM standard, just you've got the confidence, you know what you're putting on your head is the best yeah, of the yeah. best. So, you know, considering one of these is not much more than a set of tyres now, yeah. I don't think it's a big investment in yeah. the most important yeah, bit of your body. Helmet's going to last longer than a set of tyres, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah.